using Config File Validator with Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.426.1. Attached to this controller, I have an agent that has Config File Validator installed on it. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what is Config File Validator? The link for this is going to be down in the description, but what Config File Validator is, is a single cross-platform CLI tool to validate different configuration file types. So what are the different formats that are supported? What we'll see is Apple plist, CSVs, HCL, INIs, JSON, and so on. And in fact, if you watch this demo here, you're going to see when we run validator, which is the command, then it's going to go through and check for all of the different config files that it's aware of. Now, once it's installed, you have a handful of different options for usage. What you'll do is you'll pass in validator and then the options, and we'll go through the options in a moment, and then the number of search paths that you want to check. So you're not checking for a specific file, but you're checking in search paths or directories. Then we'll have different options that we can do. We can exclude directories, we can exclude file types, we can set up what kind of reporter do we want, and then also how deep do we want to go into recursing in these directories that we're providing. Now I've also got a sample repository. The link for that is also down in the description. If we take a look at the Jenkins file that's associated with this project, what we're going to see is first off, we're going to verify that everything is installed correctly. So we'll say validator dash version and then validator help, just so we can see all the different options that are available to us. Next up, you can see in this repository, I have an org one directory and I have an org two directory. Both of these are top level directories. Inside of each of these directories, I also have a couple of project directories, and even on org2, I have a subdirectory under project1. So in this very first run, this is standard run, I'm going to specify the path. So since my Jenkins file is in the same directory level as my org1, I can just specify org1. I don't have to specify a fully qualified path. Now you'll also notice that I'm setting true here. If I didn't set true, once we get a little bit further down, the job would fail. So for this example, what I'm doing is I'm passing in true for every stage. That way I can make sure that no matter what happens, we can continue on and run all of the steps. In real life, you would not be providing the pipe pipe true to each of these steps. Because if your validation fails, you want that stage to fail as well. But for this example, I'm passing that in so none of the stages fail. So we're going to run validator org1. Next up, we're going to do multiple search paths. So in this case, I'm going to say validator org1 and org2. So what's going to happen in that case is it's going to scan not only org1, but also org2. Fairly straightforward so far. So next up, what we're going to do is we're going to exclude directories. So in this case, what we're saying is validator, we're going to exclude directory, specifically project 02, in the org1 top level directory. Next, we're going to exclude file types. And in this case, we're going to say dash dash exclude file types equals JSON. So that means we're going to be ignoring any file that ends in .json. Next up, we're going to customize the recursion depth. Remember that we had a subdirectory over here in org2. Under project1, we also had a sub1. So what we're saying here for org2, we only want to go one level deep. So we would expect that we would not see sub1. And then finally, we're going to output the report in a JSON format by specifying dash dash reporter equals JSON. Well, let's go over and take a look at the job as it's run. So if we take a look at the output for CFV example, take a look at number four. What we're going to see in the very first one is when we run our validator version, we get 1.5.0. We see our help and all of the commands that we saw over in GitHub are the exact same commands that we have available to us here. And then we run the first job. So validator org one. So if you remember in org one, we had a project one and project two, both good. So if we take a look here, I've got org one, project one has a good JSON, project two has a good JSON. So everything is fine. Both of these JSON files pass. So everything is good. We had two succeeded. Now, if we go into our validator for org one and org two, so we're doing multiple paths, we see our org one is fine. With org two, project one, sub one, we have a bad JSON. It's got a bad character in it, so it fails there. Then we also see that we have a good one and another good one at a different level. So in this case, our summary was four succeeded and one failed, but because we're passing in true to this command line, then everything continues on. If we did not pass in the true, then this stage would have failed and the rest of the job would not have continued on. Again, remember, that is for this example. That's not how you would run it in real life. Let's go ahead and go down to the next stage. In this case, we are excluding the directories. So I'm saying exclude directories, 
Project 02 from org1. So when we do the scan for org1, notice we only see one file, the good JSON. If we go back up to our very first stage, we saw two files, but because we have excluded project two, that means we don't even see it here in this stage. Next up, let's go ahead and run the validator where we're excluding file types. So in this case, I'm saying, don't show me anything that's JSON. Well, in this example, all of my file types are JSON. So what we see here in the summary, zero succeeded, zero failed, because we told it to ignore all the JSON files. And since we only had JSON files, the results were zero. Next, we are only going to a depth of one within org two. Now, if we go back up to our second stage, what we can see here for org two, we actually had project one had a subdirectory only, so no files at the project one level, but then project three had a single file. Well, if we take a look at the depth, the only file that we see is the project three file. And then finally, for our report, instead of it looking sort of table-like where we have a list of the files with a check mark or an X and a summary, then all of that data instead, taking a look at org one, that report now is turned into a JSON blob. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.